so very good evening everyone uh, in the previous uh, session we completed half the portion of the consideration concept now we will be covering the remaining portion of the consideration chapter with that consideration will be over later we go into the next one essentials of contract then we will cover the basics of the contract provisions as well okay let us first concentrate on the balance portion of consideration concept let us start with this see here we completed up to here in the previous session now we are going to start with suit by a third party to a contract suit by a third party to a contract so let me explain one point already we read one concept stranger can be of two types for the purpose of contract act number 1 stranger to the consideration stranger to the contract stranger to the consideration can have the rights but stranger to the contract have no rights sir what does it mean i will explain you an example with that you can really understand what does it mean okay see here a b c three persons are there okay let me explain you the concept clearly so to sum up the concept let us take a b c three parties are there okay see here a entered into contract with b a sold some goods to whom to mr b and these goods are purchased by mr b on credit okay a sold goods to b b sold goods to c okay now a have to receive the consideration or not yes you have to receive consideration now what happened what happened is b said to c anyway i have to pay to a b said to c i have to pay to a you do one thing you have to pay to me or not directly you make the payment to mr a okay technically there is no relationship exist between a and c okay so a stranger to the contract really contract is between a and b c is actually a stranger technically a is also a stranger a is a stranger not to b a is a stranger to c technically a and c there is no relation exist not having any relation between not having any contractual relation between both of them that contractual relation is called as a privity privity means contractual relation is called as what privity though a and c don't have any kind of contractual relation between both of them okay though technically a and c are not having any contractual relation when it comes to the payment of consideration definitely there can be a stranger having validity in the contract simply to understand if if consideration is not paid by c to a if consideration is not paid by c to a a can sue mr c not with regard to the contract only with regard to the consideration part sold goods a sold goods to b goods are of a bad quality etc for that a and c can sue each other only with regard to the consideration a can sue the c if c doesn't make the payment properly clear everyone so this is the first part next issue a limited 
B limited, C limited, A limited, is the manufacturer of tires. B limited is a dealer. C limited is a retailer. A limited is a manufacturer. B limited is a dealer. C limited is a retailer. B limited entered into contract with mr C, uh, contract with c limited saying that tires sold by b limited to c limited should be sold by c limited to the public at a specified cost say for example each tire 5000 rupees he said that it should not be lesser than the specified cost okay i sum up the example a limited is a manufacturer b limited is a dealer c limited is a retailer b limited entered into contract with c limited saying that c limited i will sell tires to you some for some 4000 etc you sell to the public but your selling price should not be lesser than 5000 rupees but C limited to some of the public, it sold at 4,500 only. Okay. Knowing about this, since the market is a disturbed, A limited want to sue. Okay. A limited want to sue. Sue whom? Sue C limited. Law has said that this is not permitted. Why? contract is not between a limited and c limited here problem is not with regard to consideration problem is with regard to the contract a limited and c limited are strangers to the contract if if at all suing has to be done b limited has to sue not the a limited clear everyone so this is the idea sir okay so a stranger to a contract can sue cannot sue cannot sue However, stranger to a contract can also sue in seven different cases. Okay. Now we are going to see the exceptions. Very, very, very important question for the exam. Okay. Privity of a contract. Privity means what? contractual relationship okay doctrine of privity means privity means there should be some contractual relation between both the parties to the contract for one person to sue the other okay exceptions are there that means even a stranger to a contract may enforce a claim in the following cases in how many cases seven cases very very important for exam okay in case of a trust in case of what? Trust. A beneficiary can enforce his right under the trust through though he was not a party to the contract between the settler and the trustee. Sir, I didn't understand. I am there to explain. Na. Kaushim Keshi is there. Na. So listen. Chill. Easy. Let me first explain what is a trust. Trust is basically an obligation. Obligation to do what? Obligation to provide benefits. Provide benefits to whom? Sir, 
specified persons these specified persons are called as beneficiaries trustees like a entity like company like partnership form like llp trustees also an entity but how a trust will be formed trust is a obligation it raises entity called as a trust will stems out of an obligation that obligation will be obviously in writing trust is an obligation obligation to do what obligation to provide the benefits providing benefits to beneficiaries who is the creator of the trust author creates the trust and cast obligation on trustee and cast obligation on trustee trustee will be discharge of obligation author will provide the properties to the trustee irrevocably irrevocably means once transferred to him again it can't come back that's called as irrevocable reversibility is not possible these properties are called as from this property called as income derived from property held under trust sir i will explain entire concept now see the screen a trust is a obligation obligation to do what obligation to provide the benefits what benefits i will explain author grandfather beneficiaries grandsons grandsons or granddaughters grandchildren okay again don't tell me sir is telling about only about son <laughs> just like that it came into mind i have written okay i am very good person you know okay so author is grandfather grandchildren are beneficiaries trustee is one advocate is one advocate technically author said that mr advocate i have lot of properties in t nagar chennai from this property lot of income will be derived this income use it for the benefit of our grandchildren okay use it for the benefit of our grandchildren now trustee has committed a mistake in this case trustee is not utilizing this amount for the purpose now beneficiaries want to sue the trustee technically relationship la author and trustee are only their beneficiaries are not there it is an agreement between author and trustee that you should use it for beneficiary it's not an agreement between beneficiary and trustee 
okay trust is using for his own benefit he purchase audi car he purchase bmw he is purchasing all luxury items for himself he is not utilizing for the beneficiary after some days grandfather who is there he died no one is there to ask him this trust is using entire money for his own benefit beneficiary is being grandchildren or grown up and they sued mr trusty trusty in the court he said that sir agreement is between author and trusty author died agreement is not between beneficiary and trusty therefore these grandchildren can't ask me court said that if this be the case in india all the trusts trustees will start doing all kind of malpractices and frauds therefore exception even though there is no agreement between beneficiaries and trusty privity of contract does not apply in case of trust transactions being beneficiaries though beneficiaries are not really the parties to the contract they can still sue the trusty if there is a breach of contract this is the idea sir exception 1 in case of a trust beneficiary can enforce his right under the trust though he is not a party to the contract between settler and the trustee settler is also called as a author sir if you read institute study material answer nothing you can understand unless and until you understand this example that's kaushik mukesh hmm we put lot of efforts to understand the concept and how beautifully we can bring out the concept out of it what really he want to tell okay it's not just reading the study material it's understanding how it came once it is understood na any question may come in exam you will be answering sir anyway hope you understood this right okay next issue in case of family settlement also it does not apply sorry which does not apply privity does not apply therefore even strangers can sue what is the case let's try to understand so next exemption next exception is a family settlement concept sir what is a family settlement concept see here very popular in india there is a family four persons are there father mother son one and son two all these people four persons are there they are having family property okay after some days in this case son one with his wife son two with his wife i will write it w1 and w2 for understanding sake so after marriage so many years have passed by father expired mother is there son one and son two is also there son one and son two what they have done family property is there dispute started between son one and son two may be or may not be because of wife but dispute started what they have done they have partitioned the property they said that half the property you take half the property i will take and son one and son two entered into agreement saying that mother is there na one month i will pay her 20000 great son okay one month i will pay next month you will pay for her maintenance etc 20000 30000 whatever the case may be one month i will pay another month you will pay for her maintenance after partition after 2 3 months great son son one and son two started not paying to her mother she can sue for s1 and s2 or not is a query now really agreement to pay to mother is between son one and son two not between son and the mother 
but still in order to protect the family relations contract act said that in case of family settlements even a stranger to the contract can sue see the same thing two brothers x and y agreed to pay an allowance of rupees 20000 to the mother on partition of joint property but later they denied to abide to it held their mother although <coughs> stranger to the contract can require their sons for such allowance in the court of law if the terms of settlement are reduced to into writing okay reduced into writing means whatever they want to uh, do after the settlement of property they have written in writing the members of family who originally had not been a party to the settlement settlement is between s1 and s2 not between mother and s1 and s2 okay so uh, uh, had not been a party to settlement may still enforce the agreement next one in case of certain marriage contracts or arrangements let's try to understand the meaning of this one as well okay let's start so in case of marriage you didn't tell in case of certain marriage contracts not at the time of marriage after marriage dispute related things i will explain with an example which institute also have given two persons are there father of uh, miss y okay mr z mr x and miss y got married got married and uh, after marriage miss y we can also call her as mrs x this is the scenario what happened let me explain after marriage x ill treated mrs x means uh, harassment etc started against mrs x matter went to her father okay dispute go went to the police station uh, mr z and x entered into a written contract in the police station x promised z that he will not harass her if there is a case of harassment he will pay an allowance say rupees 1 lakh they entered into agreement after that after agreement also x harassed y immediately since z is the father in law directly he can't ask x now mrs x want to sue mr x okay mrs x is not a party to the contract actually she stands as a stranger but still concept is with her therefore mrs x can also sue mr x for ill treating even after the agreement and allowance has to be paid by mr x to mrs x for the breach of contract Did you understand the concept? This is what he want to tell. Next, in case of assignment of contract, in case of assignment of contract, sir, assignment of contract means see here. See here. A is there. 
B is there, C is there. A is a principal. B is a agent. Okay. A is a principal. Selling garments. B is a agent. Who will also sell garments. On behalf of Mr. A, on behalf of the principal, the agent will also sell. A resides in Hyderabad, B resides in Chennai. Consign or consign. Am I clear? Consign or consign. Now listen carefully to the concept. Whenever agent is given some work, agent has to do that. Okay, C is there. C is a person who was appointed by B. Who was appointed by B? What he said? B said to A. B sir. B said to C. On a particular day, he could not attend the shop. Therefore, sell goods on behalf of me. You sit in the shop and sell. C does a mistake. C does a mistake. In this case, though there is no agreement between A and C, A can still sue Mr. C. Though A and C are strangers, because this is called as a assignment. This is called as what, sir? Assignment. Assignment means what? A given that work to B. B assigned this work to C. The assignee will be subjected to the contract, though he is a stranger. He should know the facts. Then only he should accept the assignment, or else he will be liable like this. Okay, this is called as assignment. But if you see, when a benefit under a contract has been assigned, the assignee can enforce the contract, but the assignment should not involve any personal skill. Personal skill means only you have to do like that. Some contracts will be there. Agent is a artist. B is a A is a artist. B is also an artist who draws on the billboards, etc., on the roads, walls, etc. A is an artist. B is also an artist. A said to B, "You paint on the hoardings." Okay. B said to C, "On my behalf, today you uh, make the uh, what to say? You take these uh, brushes, you take these uh, paints, and you draw whatever you want." Okay. I can't come today, so he has taken the work. In this case, though C has done some wrong, A can't sue Mr. C. C can't sue Mr. A. No one can sue each other A and C because it involves a personal skill. I have given work only to the agent because it's his personal skill. At the time, it does not work. Next, acknowledgement or estoppel. Okay, estoppel. Let us try to understand what this is. Next one. Acknowledgement or estoppel, as I already read, what it is, where the promisor, by his conduct, acknowledges himself as a agent to a agent of the third party, it would results into a binding obligation towards third party. So what it is? See here, this example you can directly see. L gives to M. L gives to M. How much? Twenty thousand. Instructing Mr. M to give Mr. N. M is a agent between L and M now. L and N. L gave to M saying that you pay to Mr. N. You go and give to Mr. N. M acknowledges to N. He made a phone call and said to Mr. N, Mr. N, twenty thousand received from Mr. L. Okay, I have to pay to you. Two days completed, three days completed. Yam is not paying yam. Yam want to sue Mr. Yam now. Really, who has to pay whom? Yam has to pay yam. But now, yam can be sued by Mr. Yam though there is no agreement between yam and yam because you only said that you received the money from Mr. Yam. Therefore, yam's obligation is discharged. I can sue Mr. Yam though yam is a, a stranger to Mr. Yam. Next one. 
in case of covenant running with land the person who purchases land with a notice that owner of the land is bound by certain dues duties affecting land the covenant affecting the land may be enforced by the successor of the seller sir what does it mean first let us read this okay i will give an example for this okay see here okay see here now there is a person called as mr a he is a industrialist this mr a is having a plot of land a very big land which is having two partitions first part and a second part okay this first part and second part both are agricultural lands now mr a is selling the first part sold first part to mr b okay to mr b subjected to a agreement that second part of the land okay second part of the land is sold or first part is sold or first part is sold second part of the land is also agricultural land therefore to protect that second part of agricultural land while selling itself he said to mr b in the document very clearly covenant means agreement okay clearly he said in the covenant saying that cannot be used for industrial purpose because if it is used for industrial purpose it creates pollution if pollution is generated that will affect the first second part of my land which is already there which i didn't sell to protect the second part i am selling that if you like then only purchase the first part okay b agreed to that okay b agree to that okay b later sold it to mr c mr c want to use for a factory mr a can now see you mr c though c is a stranger to the contract he is bound by this agreement because it's called as successor who is a successor mr c is a successor of b successor means who comes next after b successor is also restricted by this agreement b should not uh, use it for industrial means not only b whoever purchases from b also will be liable though they are not the real parties to the contract contract centered into through an agent simple concept sir agent is always liable to the third party technically there is a principal there is a agent there is a third party contract is between the principal and the main third party but still agent will be liable for the wrongs that he has done next validity of an agreement without a consideration 
ओके इट इज ए जनरल रूल दैट एग्रीमेंट मेड विदउट कंसिडरेशन इज वॉइड बट देर आर सम एक्सेप्शन टू दिस वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट अनदर एग्जाम क्वेश्चन ओके इफ यू कैन सी हि देर विल बी अगेन टोटली सेवन केसेस हि सेवन केसेस कैन बी आस्ड इन एग्जाम ओके वेन कंसिडरेशन इज नॉट रिक्वयर्ड लेट सी वेन ए अग्रीमेंट इज क्रिएटेड औट ऑफ ए नाचुरल लव एंड अफेक्शन ओके पेरेंट्स चिलड्रन एक्सेट्रा इट मस्ट बी मेड औट ऑफ नाचुरल लव एंड अफेक्शन बिटवीन द पार्टी दे शुड स्टैंड इन नियर रिलेशनशिप फ्रेंड्स लाइक दट यू शुड नॉट इट मस्ट बी इन रईटिंग एंड दट शुड बी रिजिस्टर्ड अंडर लॉ दट मीन स्टां पेपर लू नीड टू डू ओके नियर रिलेशन मीन हस्ब एंड वाइफ लाइक दट इट शुड बी ओके when agreements are entered between husband and wife to do something alimony etc those don't require any kind of consideration without consideration also they can enter into agreements with each other example husband by a registered agreement promised to pay his earnings to his wife held agreement though without consideration was valid a out of natural love and affection promises to give his newly wedded daughter in law a gold necklace worth rupees 5 lakh he made a promise in writing signed it and registered the agreement is valid but if it is on a oral format it is not valid compensation for past voluntary services okay let's see a promise to compensate wholly or in part a person who has already voluntarily done something for the promisor is enforceable under section 252 in other in order that promise to pay for the past voluntary services be binding the following essential factors simply a person worked not today worked in the past for him we want to pay now okay four conditions are to be satisfied example let us see services should be rendered voluntarily that means the person should give the service voluntarily not because one person asked him out of his own concern out of sumoto sumoto means out of his own intention he should do that okay example i will give you directly p finds r's wallet and gives it to him r promises to give p rupees 10000 this is a valid contract voluntarily who asked you to take the wallet voluntarily you are a good citizen you have done that okay services must have been rendered for the promisor promisor must be in existence at the time services were rendered promisor must have intended intended to compensate the promisee that means promisor should clearly tell that i will compensate you then only that way compensation will happen or else you are a good citizen that's all promise to pay time barred debt okay where a promise in writing where a promise in writing signed by a person making it or by his authorized agent is made to pay debt barred by limitation is valid without consideration is valid without consideration example also i will tell you okay first we need to understand what is this time barred debts whenever you give loan to any other person whenever you give loan to any other person you should recollect from them within a period of 3 years from the due date in 3 years after the due date if you don't take any kind of action against him your silence will be taken as a acceptance of the default that's called as a time barred debts i gave you 1 lakh to you i asked you to pay after 3 months after 3 months you didn't pay to me i also didn't ask anything in the last in the in next 3 years 4 5 years after i need 1 lakh rupee then i asked you pay you said that i will not pay now i can't sue you because 3 years also completed this was said in limitation act though 3 years concept is not applicable for your exam it is a time barred debt bar means to stop time stopped you from recovery is called as a time barred debt in case of time barred debt what happened let me explain i am the person who gave 1 lakh to you you took 1 lakh with a promise that you will pay in 3 months you didn't pay i waited for 3 years i didn't take any action against you my right to recover from you also lost you are a good person you voluntarily came to me and said sir you on that day you gave me 1 lakh na by mistake i couldn't pay to you now i am paying you really the recovery chance of me from you the for that 1 lakh rupee has been lost 
that means i can't recover consideration now you voluntarily came to me and said i will pay now there is no consideration consideration i can't recover but voluntarily you are trying to settle na this is valid though there is no consideration between both of them really valla group i can't recover still if you are ready to pay i can take it next agency principal agent generally father and son are there why son will take from the father so in case of contract of agency agent need not be paid consideration i am not telling agent should not be paid need not be paid next okay gifts are a gift itself name is no consideration is required in case of a gifting of certain properties bailment okay bailment so before using this bailment let me first explain this charity charity means what out of a natural responsibility or love and affection will give the money in that case contract is valid even though there is no consideration by other party sir i went to a orphanage and i have given 1 lakh rupee nothing they will give me in return but i voluntarily have given so charity is an exception for contract without any consideration next bailment bailment will have the following characters bailment will be happening only with respect to goods those goods must be mobile two parties must be there goods must uh, transfer from one party to another party goods must be transferred okay goods must be transferred not the ownership physical possession should transfer they should be transferred for a purpose once the purpose is accomplished goods shall be returned if all these six conditions are satisfied we call it as a contract of a bailment okay to sum up first there must be goods they must be mobile contract la two parties must be there one party will transfer goods to another person who is transferring the party one we call as a bailor next one is called as a bailee for a purpose purpose is accomplished the goods shall be returned back example i am carrying so many company law books big big dumbbell type books i am uh, crossing the road in a mid summer one of the students saw me he felt very bad are kaushik sir is walking on the road in chennai so immediately came to me and said sir sir why you are carrying sir i will do this for you where is your house sir i said i reside in uh, for example pondi bazar this person came to me and this person said that sir you go sir directly i will come to your place and i will deliver you the books goods books are mobile two parties are there me and my student i transferred books to him for a purpose of delivery to me at my house once the purpose is accomplished you have to return the goods so you reached my house na you gave immediately what i said uh, do you want anything in return shall i pay you you said that sir out of natural love and affection i have paid you i have done this work sir we don't want any money sir your law itself is enough sir so you shaped us with regard to law na sir that itself is a consideration for us no payment sir so don't hurt us with by paying uh, by giving us payment like that you said this is called as no consideration but the contract of bailment is there so no consideration is required to affect contract of bailment okay section 148 of indian indian contract act defines bailment as delivery of goods from one person to another for some purpose the delivery must be post accomplishment goods will be returned that's all whatever i said they have said in the form six points i have explained this in a easy way than this okay that's all with this we have completed one very important and a mandatory question chapter 
consideration is completed hope everyone is having a full clarity on this issue okay so thank you very much we'll meet with the next point in the next session we will discuss about the next area essentials of the contract okay thank you